There are just over two months left until Election Day. The political stories are everywhere. The Republicans just wrapping up their convention. The Democrats set to start theirs this week. But it's not just on TV. One of the top movies out there right now is also a political film. Take a look at this. Obama has a dream, a dream from his father, that the sins of colonialism be set right and America be downsized. It is called 2016, Obama's America, and it is already the most successful conservative political documentary of all time. Joining me now is Dinesh D'Souza, the man behind the film. He is also the author of the bestseller, The Roots of Obama's Rage. Uh, good morning, Dinesh. How are you? Hey, it's good to be on the show. Uh, so tell me, uh, what a success this documentary is having already. Are you surprised at all? Uh, I am uh, pleasantly surprised. I think it shows there's a real uh, hunger in the country to get uh, new information about Obama. And I think also the uh, documentary tells a quite riveting Obama story, uh, which is the story of a kid who was abandoned by his mom and by his dad, who went on a sort of odyssey to find himself. Uh, and the film is shot in Hawaii, in Indonesia, in Kenya. Uh, I interviewed George Obama, the president's brother. So there's a lot here that's, uh, that leaves people feeling that this is an eye-opening film. Uh, much of the film I thought was interesting is actually narrated by President Obama himself with the audio version of his book, uh, Dreams from My Father. Do you think that that could be a bit misleading for people who might think that the president actually had a hand or participated in making this film? <laughs> well, we, we haven't had a single person who thinks that, but I think it does give a credibility and an authenticity to the film. Uh, if you compare our film, for example, with Michael Moore's Fahrenheit 9-11, uh, that was a film with a lot of conspiracy theories and dubious on the facts. Uh, our film follows Obama's own journey and uses his voice at critical times, so it's kind of hard to argue because you're, you're getting the message from the horse's mouth. Uh, no doubt this film has its fans. It also has a whole lot of critics. Uh, a couple of key points in the film that I want to ask you about this morning. Uh, first, uh, you say that the president wants to put Americans deeper in debt. Uh, you point to the debt at $15 trillion now, and you say at this rate we could hit $20 trillion by 2016. But I want you to look at this, uh, some numbers here with me. The debt has gone up by around 50 percent during the Obama presidency. It went up 86% under George W. Bush and 186% under President Reagan. So why um, is President Obama's debt so much worse and, and intentional, as you say? Well, remember that these percentages are uh, depend on the base, you know. So, for example, Reagan's deficits were $200 billion. Uh, and that's a big number, uh, but it's tiny compared to Obama's number. Even, even Bush's highest deficit was half a trillion, $500 billion. Obama's lowest deficit is $1 trillion. Uh, so uh, Obama has been adding debt at a sort of unsustainable level. And, uh, and all I'm saying is we're a rich country. We can afford to be uh, extravagant and even a little reckless. Uh, but at a certain point, you hit a tipping point but why would uh, and it that's be when you're risking well, I'm, I'm saying that if you look at Obama's anti-colonial ideology, which is an ideology essentially of global redistribution, to redistribute wealth and power globally. Now, just look at the, what the effect of debt is. If our children and grandchildren have $20 trillion of debt and $10 trillion would have, would have been added by one man, Obama, then they're going to have to pay it back. And a lot of that debt is owed to the, the Kuwaitis, the Saudis, the Chinese. So debt becomes a form of global redistribution over time. Money ends up going outside of a America and to the rest of the world. Uh, you also say that the president is trying to level this global playing field, as you're saying, and grow more superpowers. Uh, what countries do you think that he actually wants to be the new superpower? Uh, I think that Obama would like to see China, uh, Brazil, uh, India, and Russia, uh, along with the United States, share power. Remember that the world before colonialism was like that. It was a world in which you had a number of big empires. The Chinese, you had the Indians, you had the uh, empires of the Americas. Uh, you had uh, So a Western civilization was only one among many. Uh, it's a rather odd situation now that a single country, America, dominates the world so much. Uh, we have an outsized standard of living. We uh, have a, uh, an enormous military presence around the world. So I think Obama thinks that's globally unjust. He'd like to knock America off its pedestal so we're no longer number one, uh, but we are just one nation among many sharing powers with other big countries. Uh, in the film, you say that Obama was elected solely because of his race. Uh, do you stand by that and explain that? 
Well, we, we, inter we interview a source, uh, Shelby Steele of the Hoover Institution, and he makes the point that Obama was offering America a sort of a secret weapon, a secret sauce. And what was that? The promise of racial redemption. There's a deep desire in America to get beyond our racial history. So it's almost like by voting for Obama, we all get to feel really good about ourselves, and Obama benefited from that politically. Do you, do you think the American people, though, are that shallow, that we would vote for someone to feel good about ourselves? I mean, this is the future of the country. But, Randy, that's not shallow at all. It's, it's the deepest American aspiration to live up to our country's high ideals. And our country is based on the idea that we're all created equal. We're moral equals in the eyes of God. So the idea of trying to find a president who embodies that aspiration, far from being shallow, actually re reflects the best of the American character. Hello, uh, Dinesh D'Souza, nice to chat with you. Uh, certainly uh, a lot more I wish we could talk about, but uh, we don't have the time this morning. But uh, thank you very much. My pleasure.